the many religions in the Orient, Buddhism is one of the most tranquil. And the Thai followers of Buddha are indeed of a tranquil and happy disposition. For centuries, the people of Thailand have lavished time and money on the 20,000 temples they have erected to the glory of Buddha. Although the splendors of the temples are legendary, the temple is not merely a place of worship. It is a center of learning, a place of repose and meditation open to all. Every male must spend a period of his life as a monk, during which he depends on a rather strange kind of charity. Monks are not permitted to beg, and unusually, it is the donor who thanks the monk for accepting his gift. Buddhists are strictly forbidden to kill, even insects, and so the temples become sanctuaries for all living Inside, lulled by the sonorous chanting of prayers, or in the courtyards outside, charmed by the tinkling of wind bells, an atmosphere of serenity prevails. At one time, Thailand was very rich in gold, and much of this precious metal was used in decorating temples. Gold leaf is still used in abundance on the decorations, and even the poorest of people will go without food to buy a few square centimeters of gold leaf to adorn his favorite statue of Buddha. temple statues are the lavishly decorated lords of the spirit world who guard the temple gazing from behind awesome masks. Masks also play an important role in the classical dances of Thailand, many of which are based on mythology. One of the best known is the Hindu epic poem of the Ramayana. The story is so long and involved that it is almost incomprehensible to people of the Western world. However, it is not necessary to understand the story to appreciate the magnificent costumes and the skill of the dancers. The orchestra is principally composed of percussion instruments, of which the Kong Bong and the Ranat, types of xylophone, provide both melody and harmony. The dancers dedicate their lives to the study of the dance. The lifelong rigorous discipline of training starts when the dancer is still a mere baby of only three or four years old. Classical Thai music is never written. It is committed to memory. And as a result of years of practice, even without a conductor, the orchestra plays in perfect unison. Thank you. 
Many of the tableaus in the dance are based on paintings depicting the Ramayana poem. Movements of hands and fingers are of great importance in the performance of the classical dance. The paintings of the Ramayana in the temple of the Emerald Buddha place special emphasis on hands. The fantasies of the Ramayana story seem endless. Demons bridging the seas, battles between the armies of the gods assisted by monkeys, fighting demons, raiding expeditions, and even cataclysms find a place. The end of this strange tale is just as it should be. The triumph of good over evil. Some 500 miles north of Bangkok is Chiang Mai, one of the most beautiful and richest agricultural areas of Thailand. <laughs> Rice, which is the staple diet, is also an important factor in the economy of the country. It is easy to grow and harvest, and is probably the finest in the world. On the smaller farms, Husking is still carried out on the same primitive machine that has been used for centuries. The cultivation of Thai rice is surrounded by many superstitions. The time of the harvest itself is, of course, determined by the ripeness of the grain. But the dates of ploughing and planting the paddies are still often determined by consultation with astrologers. <laughs> verdant country, amply watered, Thailand is truly beloved of the gods. The slow flowing of the rivers is reminiscent of the graceful movements of the fingernail dance.
and delicate insects abound in Thailand. On the product of one such insect is based one of Thailand's most important industries, silk. Cottage industries provide some of the country's most skilled craftsmanship. Without the elephant, it would be virtually impossible to work the dense teak forests. As powerful as a bulldozer, yet so delicate he can crack a peanut with his foot, the elephant can maneuver teak logs weighing several tons with uncanny precision. It's not generally known that elephants cannot stand too much sun. They suffer from sunstroke. After a hard day in the steamy forest, there's nothing they like better than to disport in the cool river. The pace of life in Thailand is unhurried. The teak logs are floated down the rivers to the coast sometimes taking as long as five years to complete the journey. Until comparatively recently, the canals, or clongs, were the only way of transport in the low-lying south. Even today, many people prefer to live beside the water in the picturesque stilted houses, far from the horrors of the modern city and the motor car. But alas, even the clongs are not entirely free from traffic jams, particularly on market days.
Almost anything can be bought in the floating markets, except smiles, and these are given freely. One advantage of living along the banks of the Klongs is that fishing can be freely undertaken by anyone. But this can be rather a hit and miss affair, as the nets are generally set in a fixed position. Thailand also has its fishy tails. Carp measuring nearly six feet long are reputed to have been caught in these waters. But the normal catch is much less spectacular. The brilliant colours of the flowers which grow in profusion are only matched by the costumes of the dancers in the bamboo dance. This is not as easy as it looks, and anyone who takes a full step will pay dearly. unfortunately been invaded many times during the course of its history. The most valuable statues were either destroyed or carried off as loot. Those that remain are but a pale reflection of what must have been a magnificent past. Although thousands upon thousands of stone statues represent many personal conceptions of Buddha, they all depict a common quality, serenity. In many forms and attitudes, Buddha seems to regard the passing of the years with benign indifference. The deserted temples, which are slowly decaying and disappearing into the jungle, stand like sentinels watching over the reclining Buddha. yaks or guardians still survive on the sites of former temples to ward off evil spirits, past and present. It is hard to believe that this music is played on simple bamboo pipes. If music hath charms, so indeed does dancing. At least when it is performed by these delightful young ladies. bounty of nature, the beauty of this generous land, and the warm, agreeable climate, so beloved by the gentle ties, are reflected in many of their traditional dances.
At night, the gentle Tai has his own form of entertainment. Although no holes are barred and kicking is permitted, Thai boxing is no worse than Western prize fighting. Although it looks rather bloodthirsty, in fact it's all fairly innocent. The cocks do not wear spurs and the bulls are tethered and have their horns capped. At the end of each round, the seconds move in to assist the contestants. And even the fighting cocks receive special attention. Contests are limited to five rounds and usually end cleanly. On the 15th day of the 12th moon, Loi Kathong, the festival of the Angel River, takes place. The purpose is to ask forgiveness for every act by which the river may have been rendered impure. Offerings are made of little rafts of leaves, adorned with flowers and burning candles. Once these offerings are launched on the river, they float towards the sea with a gentleness befitting the people of this tranquil land. 